uh, don't have any injuries for you. So a good um, all around win. I thought the every phase uh, did a nice job and uh, played well. There's a good focus amongst the team. Um, I thought our defense really did a great job on third downs, um, in particular in the red zone, and uh, held them to field goals, which ended up being big for us, and then really turned up the gas the second half. Um, and then uh, the offense was able to uh, move the ball well in the air. And um, uh, it's funny because we have this whole RPO thing going in some of those uh, runs where we end up being throws, but we'll, we'll just count them as yards. And, uh, and so yeah, I thought it was a, a nice job by Patrick. Um, again, he had complete command of everything going on, <clears throat> including the, the check at the end when they were in a blitz look and uh, hit Tyreek on a big, big touchdown. So just uh, you know, both sides of the ball, both lines, I thought uh, were did a nice job. I, I think that Jets defensive front is, is really a good front. Greg Williams, experienced defensive coordinator that gives you a lot of different looks. And um, you know, I was proud of how those big guys handled it on both sides of the ball. So uh, a lot of good work there. And then we were able to get some of the young guys in also for uh, with some work. All right, without time, George. Let's go first to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Obviously, the punt there uh, with, with Tommy Townsend with the pass to Byron Pringle, what did the Jets do that led you to, to make that call there that you saw that it could work? And how anxious were you when you saw how high that pass was? Yeah, well, they've been working on it. I mean, they've been doing uh, doing it the last couple, three weeks, and and um, and it's been like clockwork. Uh that one did get a little high. It's different when it's in a game, you know, it's, uh, and he's as good a thrower as there is. So he, <clears throat> he's a real good athlete. He was able to show a little bit of that today. So, but it's a little different in the game, you know, next time he does, it, it'll be better. Won't be quite as high, but we'll take it right there. Go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Coach, congrats on the win and, and game plan. 10 different receivers today, four different receivers with touchdowns. Just um, when you have, such talented guys who can do uh, damage with the ball in their hands. How, how great does that make it for a play caller, play designer? Yeah. I mean, listen, these guys make that, make that easy and uh, are as easy as it can be in the NFL. I mean, there's such great competition out here that, uh, but the best thing that I, I see and like is that they're on the same page. So, um, you know, they're thinking right along <clears throat> how the coaches are thinking when we're over on the sideline thinking we know everything. Right. So, they're 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 kind of right in line with it and and actually executing it in in game time. So it's it's impressive. Go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey Andy, um, I wanted to explore more that that play that you briefly mentioned, the last touchdown to Tyreek Hill. We could hear just the audio of, that Patrick did check out of something. Um, can you tell us what he checked out of and and how similar? I mean, was it a running play? And if it was a passing play already, how similar was the route that Tyreek ran to to the original play? If if I could tell you, I'd have to make you disappear. No, it was it was a pass to a pass. So I sound like I was from Philly for about a second there, but don't tell them that. <laughs> Let's go next to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Andy, um, you've talked uh, and your coaches to uh, pretty consistently this season about complacency and, and that being a thing that you guys are, are guarding against. I'm just wondering if has there been a point this season where you've seen complacency and you've had to address it. And, and, and just secondarily, I'm wondering what a performance like this, no disrespect to the Jets, but a per, per performance like this today says in, in, in that regard. Yeah, so listen, coaches are always <clears throat> on guard for all that. And you say it a million times, you know, you, you, you're always gonna say it. I mean, we're, that's how coaches are wired. So I remind them just, you know, of that, but um, I really haven't worried about it with them because they're, these guys are pretty focused. They enjoy playing with each other. Um, and listen, if you're going to be good <clears throat> at the end of the year, you got to take care of business during the year. And so um, every game counts uh, as you go forward. And so it's uh, it's important that you bear down um, every week. And, uh, you know, that's that's part of it, you know, as you go. But I haven't really worried that much about it, no, with them. Next to Vahe Gregorian. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Andy. Um, you know, every game obviously takes on its own personality. And, and I, but I think there's a lot of thought that, that you guys would, would probably beat the Jets without needing a, a play like the, the fake punt. Um, 
what, what goes into that kind of decision and, and trying to seize the game that way? Yeah, well, listen, you never know in this league. I mean, the parody in this league is ridiculous. Um, Sam Darnold, he gets hot and runs around and makes plays. And if that's going on, and I mean, you saw him drive uh, down to the red zone a couple different times. So it's, uh, you know, that's, uh, you, you got to score points. I've been through too many of those where you pull the, pull off the accelerator and then, um, you know, something bad happens. So you're better off just keeping it down and, <clears throat> and going for four quarters. Up. Got time for a couple more guys. We'll go Todd Lebo and then Darren Smith. Go ahead, Todd. Hey, Coach, you mentioned those RPOs, and I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago that Patrick was talking about he's, you know, when he was doing the RPOs, it's okay to run it, right? I mean, he always likes to throw it. How much better has he gotten on deciding and seeing exactly what you want him to see and making the right decision as he's come along through this offense? And how hard is it for, for him is there, or any quarterback to, who wants to throw it to, to, to hand it off when they want to throw it? I mean, he was spot on today. I mean, he he was uh, seeing and shooting, and he's very accurate with those things, um, seeing them, I'm saying. And then his throws are good, too, so if he pulls it. Um, uh, but at the same time, he's patient with uh, the run part of it, and he's got a good feel of the game and what's happening with it down and distance-wide, field position, all those things. So <clears throat> um, full trust in him with it, yeah. Let's go last to Darren Smith. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Coach, uh, uh, the question I have is Dirty Dan Sorensen, you know, the last two weeks he's made big plays. How has his play, you know, kind of jumpstart and sparked the team? Of course, last week he had a pick six, and today he had the big fumble, uh, the big – caused the big fumble late in the ball game. Yeah, listen, he's playing good football right now, Darren. I mean, he's he's uh, flying around. He's making plays. Um, he's, he's just doing – all in all, he's doing a nice job uh, all the way around. Um, he's playing confident and um, – and, and so, you know, it's his seventh year and, and uh, he, you know, I think he feels comfortable back there with the Badger and they've got good communication amongst them and, uh, and with 22, I mean, they're, they're all, uh, it's a tight group back there. So he's doing a nice job. We'll get started with Pete Sweeney first. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Tyron, congrats on the win. Uh, what can you say about this two game stretch that, Dan Sorensen has had first the uh, interception last week and and then now the big fumble and, and just how far he's come since you've been here. I I, I try to tell people last, last year, you know, um, the guy's just so committed, man. Every, each and every day he's finding a way to, you know, take the coaching and apply it. You know, not everybody can do that and then play at a play at a fast level. Um, you know, he's communicating at a high level. He's making big time plays for us, um, game changing plays, momentum, you know, swinging plays and, uh, we expect that from him. You know, he puts in a lot of work throughout the weekend. Uh, I know I believe in him. <clears throat> Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Tyron. I wanted to ask you about the idea of watching Patrick now in year two as a teammate. He's halfway through the season. He's only had one turnover. Just what impresses you most watching Patrick? <laughs> That's funny because I was talking to uh, I was talking to C. Ward before the game. You know how they show the stats on a, on a jumbotron. I was like one interception. Like I wouldn't want to play against that guy. You know that guy doesn't turn the ball over. He takes care of the football. Um, you know he knows how to play the quarterback position. You know he knows how to make everybody. You know seem like they're involved in the game plan. And um, you know I'm glad I'm glad he's on my team. Next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Tyron. Uh... You're always animated on the field during games, but it felt like you were a little more amped up maybe than normal today. Did you feel like the guy – did I read that wrong, or did you feel like maybe the guys needed a little juice going into this particular game today? Well, you know, it's November. You know, it's December football, you know, January football. Um, you know, I think at this point in the season, we are who we are, you know, as a team. And, you know, so it's all about playing with swagger. It's all about playing with emotions, controlled emotion. Um, you know, and just going out there playing hard as you can for your brothers. But um, November, December football, I mean, that that's the only way you punch a ticket, you know, to play in the postseason. So we got to play our best. You know, we got to feel our best. Um, we got to bring everybody to that level. Let's go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Tyron. Um, you're always talking about how this defense needs to finish. You really emphasize is that you guys allowed like two first downs in the second half, even though you had a big lead, kept bringing that intensity. How proud were you of your group today for doing that? 
Oh yeah, I think all of us were committed. All all of us were focused throughout the whole game, throughout the course of the game. I think Coach Spags do a great job too, of just staying on top of us, reminding us, you know, even after big plays, um, you know, to this game isn't over. You know, we got a whole another half to play. It's, it's a lot of football left. So I thought our guys took it seriously um, the, the whole way through. Um, and that's what you want. You never want to stoop down to the level of any opponent um, if you feel like you're a better team. So uh, I'm proud of my guys, um, but it's a lot we could clean up, you know, from that first half. Go next to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Um, hey, Tyron. Um, my question is a little bit along those lines. I mean, uh, the coaches have talked a lot this year about complacency. Uh, I know you're basically like an extension of them um, to the players. I'm just wondering what your messaging is along those lines and, and specifically how, how did you guys get better today, um, you know, considering the opponent? Well, you know, I, like I told the team, you know, it's all about us. It's all about our standard. It's about the way we live, the way we practice, you know, what we're capable of doing. Um, so obviously you, you put a lot of emphasis into the teams you're playing, but at the end of the day, it's all about us, you know, whether we are going to show up with the right kind of attitude and, um, you know, that's, that, that's been the message as of late, you know, just showing up with the right kind of attitude, you know, uh, because we do put in some great work throughout the week, just believing in that process. And like I said, showing up with, a, with an attitude. We've got time for two more guys with we'll Harold and then Mitchell. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Tyron, first things first, Jack, our janitor says congratulations on the win. <laughs> second off, uh, the takeaways. You finally got that takeaway in the second half, kind of leading into what others have talked about, the momentum going forward in the second half. Uh, just all, what it meant to get that takeaway, to see uh, Sorensen get that, and just trying to keep that momentum going forward now as you go to the second half of the season. How do you kind of take something that you get from this game, that second half play, going forward? Well, you know, Coach Spags, you know, showed a clip last night of Kobe Bryant. And, you know, obviously Kobe Bryant is a well-accomplished player. And, but all Kobe Bryant talked about was getting better, you know, at something, you know. So I think that's really the mindset for us as a defense um, is to really pick apart the film, you know, find what it is we can get better at, um, and then continue to move forward. Um, you know, you mentioned Dan, you know, he's been stepping up big for us, playing some big time football. Um, and, you know, we expect that. And we expect Dan to, you know, up the level of everybody around him as well. So I feel like he's one of those guys. We'll go last to Mitchell Summers. Go ahead, Mitchell. Hey, Tyron. I'm sure you saw that after that last touchdown throw that Pat Mahomes carried off Tyreek Hill. So kind of speaking larger, what does it mean to see the way the team loves being around each other and celebrating? I mean, you know, you don't always have that in the NFL. You know, a lot of guys come to work and go their separate ways. Um, I feel like this is a different locker room. You know, I feel like we're really bonded. Um, we really enjoy each other's company. Um, and we love to compete with each other and against each other. You know, we always try to find ways to make each other better. But at the end of the day, it's all about the team. It's all about embracing each other, um, you know, committing to those relationships and, you know, hoping that those kind of things pay off on the field. And um, so I think anytime you have our quarterback, you know, who's kind of leading the charge, you know, embracing everybody around him, um, it makes it easy for everybody else to kind of follow that suit. Okay, McCall, are you ready for us? Mic check, mic check, yep. Mic Thank check you. one, mic check two. Yeah, can you? Yep, it works. Uh, Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, McCall, congrats on the win. I, I tend to think that you probably were waiting a long time this year for this type of game. What did it mean to you to have, perform that way against the Jets? Uh, I think I had a good game. Um, I still had two drops. I don't think it was – I could have had a better game, you know. And uh, that's the only thing I'm really thinking about. I think Pat did a good job today of, you know, throwing the ball around. Um, he had a good game as well. All the receivers, you know, I think I think we did everything well. I think it was a good team win today. And um, I can just think about my performance. I think Pat threw the ball in great straight spots and then he catch it. I just had to, you know, catch the ball and do, do what I had to do with it. But I think I'm satisfied with the performance. Go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Nicole, um, can you just walk us through your touchdown there on the first drive? Uh, yeah, a um, little flip pass. I don't know, man. I think it, it was just blocked up very well. I just had to – I really had – I had to score on that play. That's how, that's how I blocked up, how where they blocked it up. And uh, I think Coach Reed did a good job of calling in the right situation. And um, I just had to get in the end zone and shoot. I did, so that's all I can say about it. <laughs> Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, McCole, uh, were you expecting this week to be the one where the deep ball came back to the passing game? And, and Brad, I'll have one quick follow-up. Uh, I mean, I didn't think nothing. If I had a chance to get, you know, get a deep ball, definitely was going to, you know, take advantage of it. But the way the game played today was kind of more of a nickel and dime game and an and intermediate kind of game and take what they give you. And um, so that's what we did. Go next to Herbie Tiope. Go ahead, Herbie. 
Hey, Michael, speaking of taking what they give, uh, that that in the first quarter, the fake punt, what was your, uh, from where you were standing, how big was that to set the tone for the game? Uh, I think it was big. I think we've been working on that for, you know, the last past week, two weeks on that play. And, um, you know, it's, it's good, you know, to have some, you know, some plays up your sleeve, especially on special teams. And that definitely give you a good momentum boost, you know, especially the offense coming off. And, you know, everything is a punt and you fake it and you get it. That's just a huge momentum uh momentum um, booster. So I'm glad we did that. And um, that we just, you know, feed off that and, and just keep playing off the, the energy that they, that they gave us. Got time for a couple more. We'll go Harold and then Steve. Go ahead, Harold. McCall on that blocked field goal. I was just wondering what was going on through your head. Do you try to, oh, I see all your expression already, but on that blocked field goal, were you trying to lateral it? Did you, what was going through your head there, man? Man, I just wanted to really the, – the ball died on me. I thought it was going to bounce better than it did. You know, the ball freaking died, man. And and I kind of caught it, like, like the, the end of it, like my pinkies kind of. And then once I secured it, it felt like, you know, the whole world was around me. So I, I was like – I ain't saying I panicked, but I was just like, man, I'm just – hold on to the ball, man, if I can score, score. And um, I know I heard somebody say pitch it, but I think I was spinning. I don't know if I was spinning or what I was doing. I couldn't see nobody at all. And I'm like, man, I'm just going to the half, man, and never see another day, man. Adam, I believe you had a follow-up. I think I want to cut you off there. Go ahead, Adam. Oops, try another. There you go. Okay, we good? Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that uh, block field goal recovery you made. Are you out there much on, on field goal block, number one? And if not, why were you out there this time? Yeah, I'm out there. Uh, I'm on the right side. Yeah, I'd be on the right okay. side. All right. My bad. And we'll go last to Steve Walls. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, what's up, McCoe? Uh Byron is, is been placed on kick return and what now seems to be his role. Uh, so you only have to worry about return and uh, punt return and receiver. How has narrowing your 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 role on this team helped you to flourish over these past couple of weeks? Uh, I mean, you know, I guess it's just some, like you said, a little less to focus on. You really got to focus on it, but you know, I can come back there any time. I think uh, so. We can any, any time just say go back there and, and return a kick. So I still got to be ready for that. I got to be in tune with the game plan. You know, on what we have on kickoff. So I'm, I'm I'm very much into it. You know, and uh, but. And it, it does, you know, take your focus off that a little bit. You can focus more on receiver or, or part return. But like I said, I can go back there at any time. And, uh, but I think Pringle doing a great job. I think Pringle, you know, I think he deserves a shot to be back there anyway. And as you can see, he's running the, he's running the ball pretty hard. And, you uh, know, he scored the first time he touched it. He could have had another one a day, you know. So um, I think I think he, he he fit to be back there. Big body man with some speed. I'm loving, I love it every time I see him catch the ball. I'm definitely standing up hoping he take it back to the crib. Hey Patrick, are you ready for us? Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. Uh, we could start first with Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Patrick. Um, it, it seems like a few times this year we, we've been talking to you about it, sort of accepting the fact that maybe the stats aren't always going to be there, whether it's the way deep in, your defense is playing, whether other defenses are defending you. I, I guess just what did it feel like today to sort of be able to open up? And I, I know you don't check the stats all the time, but still to, to, to feel like you were having a big day out there pretty consistently. Yeah, I mean it's always it's always fun to go out there and, and and score touchdowns and do all that different type of stuff. But uh, we kind of been saying it all year long is we have a lot of ways that we can beat teams. And uh, today they they were doing a good job of kind of uh, stuffing up the run and we we were, took it to the air and, and threw the ball and, and made plays happen that way. And so um, now that uh, you kind of see it, that we can throw the ball on teams, we can run the ball on teams, and it's about taking what's there and finding the best way to win a football game. Let's go next to Dave Scretta. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Patrick, I was just curious what went into that uh, touchdown celebration with Tyreek, and it actually looked like you tried to to give him a ride on his first one also and, and maybe didn't make it quite as far. No, the first one, I was just trying to get him out of the stands. I mean, uh, I'm just – because uh, he went up there, and I, need, and I don't know the rules on that, but I know it's not probably the best thing to do. So I was trying to get him back down. And then uh, the uh, the second one, uh, it looked like he was a little dinged up. So, I mean, he, he made a great play on the ball, and I got him over there. And luckily, he ended up being fine. So uh, we're just having fun out there. Let's go next to Aaron Ladd. Go ahead, Aaron. Patrick, this might be the last time we get you before Election Day on Tuesday. I know how much you have dedicated just to getting people out and uh, – making it eligible for them to use their vote. What would you say to them as we uh, round the final turn? Yeah, I would say just, just finish the job. Go out there, vote, use your voice. 
uh, no matter where you live, no matter who you're voting for, use your voice and, and do whatever you think is best for you, this country, and your family. Go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Patrick, you've talked about how patient you've had to be this year. And but did you have a feeling after watching video of the Jets and, and knowing how Greg Williams plays defense that today was going to be the day that some things opened up down the field for you? Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that necessarily. Uh, I think he does a good job of stopping the run. I think if you watch uh, this entire season, they've done a good job usually of of getting their kind of cornerback, cornerbacks and linebackers in there and and stopping the run. So I knew there would be some opportunities to me to make some throws. Um, and, and I thought the dudes did a good job of finding the open spaces and zones. And so uh, it's good to be able to do this, uh, have a game like this, uh, going into another great opponent next week um, and kind of show that we can we can do multiple things, not not just one. Go next to Pete Sweeney. Go, Pete. Hey, Patrick, congrats on the win. Uh, Andy had mentioned that there were some RPOs built in today. It certainly felt like maybe there were more and you had a tendency to throw a little bit more than you uh, were running today. Just what were you seeing out there? Yeah, just the uh, kind of the alignments of, of, of defenders. Uh, they, were, they were really focused on stopping the run, which they did a good job of doing. Uh, we have to obviously try to be better there. Um, but uh, they were coming down fast, and I, the guys were getting open in space, and I was putting it in their hands. And I think the, the biggest thing was he kept calling those plays. He kept giving me the option to do uh, run or, or throw the pass. And I think when you do that, it really puts a lot of stress on the, on the defense. Let's go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Patrick, uh, five touchdown passes today. I'm curious, which one was your favorite? Uh, my favorite is probably the last one, just because I, I got a got a check to it, and we've been working on that check for a while, and we got the look that we liked, and we we're able to check and make the play happen. So that was that would say that was that one or the the underhand one. I mean, the underhand one's sweet, man. Every time I get that opportunity to do that, I, I, I take, try to take advantage. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Patrick, I'm just wondering if there's a different feel for you halfway through this season than in the two previous? And if so, what that feeling might be about yourself and how the team is playing right now? Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, a different feel. The thing to me that, uh, that I've learned from in my experience is that we have the team that can go get whatever we want to get. Um, going into the last few seasons, you, you haven't won, you haven't had that Super Bowl championships. So you don't you don't know for sure. You think you do, but you don't know for sure. And I, I know that we have the players in this locker room and now it's about the effort that we put in every single day and, and the really grind of every single day, not taking anything for granted. Uh, that, that, that's what it's going to take. And I think uh, we have the leaders in this room to try to make a run at it. Go next to Matt, Derek. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Patrick. I'm curious about your perspective from the sideline of the, the fake punt and also just to, to how important was that to keeping that drive going. And also, what's your uh, critique on the throwing skills of Tommy Townsend? No, I thought it was sweet, man. He ripped that thing. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't no like lollipop at all. I mean, he caught it and ripped it over there. So it was, it was pretty impressive. I actually didn't know it was happening. I was trying to go for it. And Coach Reed was just, was, I should have known by the way he just kind of threw, he said, oh, just go ahead. Like let this, the, he sent the special teams out there. And I was like, man, you're not going to even think about it. And I guess he already had things planned ahead. And I think Tobe does a great job. Uh, and he has for a very long time of, of having different tricks and, and different ways to execute at a high level for that special teams group. And, uh, it gave, us a, it gave us a chance to have another play, and we, we were able to score on it. It was a big point in the game. We've got time for three more. We'll go Sam, Todd, and then Vahe. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, um, Patrick, I, <laughs> I mean this with no disrespect to the Jets, right, but the, their record is what they are. Um, I, I'm just curious, do you judge yourself, do you judge the offense's performance a little bit differently uh, against this opponent than you would, you know, the Ravens or a team that you expect to see in January? I, I don't. I mean, uh, if you look at this defense and how they played this year, I mean, they might not have won uh, any any games, but they they're in games and they're competing and they're and they're doing their they're doing their job. I mean, I mean, they're they're a team that has a lot of talented players. And uh, uh, when we went out there and we had to execute at a high level, and you have to do that in this league. You can't take anyone for granted because uh, I mean, there's great football players in every single team that you're going to go up against. Let's go next to Todd Lebo. Go ahead, Todd. Uh, well, first off, Patrick, what's the – that when Anthony Sherman caught the underhand pass, they said it was a smoked sausage. Do you have a name for it when Travis catches it? It was called Stampede Right. Stampede Right. Very nice. And at this point, we're in November, right? And the Pittsburgh and, and Baltimore just played. Pittsburgh pulled it out. They're undefeated. Are you looking at the scoreboard? Are you scoreboard watching anything like that yet? And if you ever do that, when does that click in? Um, I mean, uh, I think uh, you can't do that. You have to focus on the opponent that you have every single week. Um, I mean, Pittsburgh, uh, they, they won their game and they're undefeated. Uh, they're a great football team. And so for us, 
uh, we just try to win as many games as possible. And if, if we win them all and we're 15 and one and they're 16 and 0, they deserve to be the number one seed. The last of Vahe Gregoria. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Patrick. Uh, I assume you've seen uh, Tommy throw before. So you, did you know he could, uh, he could dish it like that? And, and you know, just one other part about that play. It's 35 to nine, the final score, but, but do, do moments like that really make a difference even in a lopsided game like this in the end? Uh, 100%. Those moments, I mean, especially in the beginning parts of the games, uh, those, are, those are huge moments in the game of getting the momentum in your favor and getting, getting things going and, and putting points on the board. I mean, that, that changes the whole entire game. Um, and so, uh, obviously, it was a big play. And I've seen Tommy throw, but, I mean, you, you never know until someone gets under pressure how they're going to perform. And he did it. He's done a great job of, of, of punting the ball and a, and a great job of throwing it so far. You got it. All right. <laughs> All right, Tommy, are you ready for us? Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, we will get started with Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Tommy, congrats on the win. Uh, play comes in for the fake. Just what was going through your mind and, and how easy was it to fire off that pass? Uh, well, you know, running out there, I mean, of course, like I'm, I'm pumped if we have the opportunity to run a fake. Uh, but yeah, I got out there. We got the look we wanted. And uh, from then on, I was just thinking, you know, just don't baby, get it out there to him. Um, just like I've been doing, you know, all week, the past couple weeks in practice, I guess. And uh, yeah, I got out to Pringle. He made a nice catch and uh, got a couple yards. Let's go next to Herbie Teopi. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Tommy, were you at least, uh, were you a bit concerned though when the, when the, all seemed to go high because Pringle had to make the adjustment and jump up there. So I was wondering, like, what was your reaction when you saw the ball going high? Um, I mean, I wasn't, like I said, oh, I'm, I guess I'm not, wasn't too concerned. Uh, Pringle's a great athlete. He's got great hands. And, uh, you know, luckily, yeah, it was, it was in a good enough spot for for him to catch. And, uh, like I said, get, get a few yards. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I wasn't too worried. Like I said, we've been practicing it the past couple weeks, and uh, we've been executing it great. So, uh, so I, I was pretty confident going into that. Go next to Aaron Ladd. Go ahead, Aaron. Tommy, I'm curious if you were exactly when the last time you threw a pass in a football game was, whether it was high school or something like that. I, I, people are picking you apart on Twitter, man. They say your stance is a little wide. Maybe you threw baseball more recently. When was the last time you threw something? Uh, shoot, the last pass in the game was probably like freshman year of high school or something like that. After, after freshman year, I played a lot of corner and safety. And, uh, and yeah, that was about it. But I, I did play baseball throughout high school. Um, but, uh, but, yeah. Next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. I I, I apologize. I had, I had bad form on that. <laughs> Tommy, I just wanted to get your reaction to Patrick's reaction of you throwing the football. Clearly, you know, reigning MVP, Super Bowl League MVP. Just what was it like to get congratulations from him? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's awesome. I mean, we have lockers right next to each other, so I, I can't help but say that it rubbed off a little bit onto me on that throw. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's pretty cool anytime you get recognition from Pat and, you know, some of these leaders and big name guys on the team, especially as a rookie. It's it's really something cool, you know. All right, guys, we've got time for a couple more before we get Tommy out of here. We're going to go Matt, Derek, and then Mitchell. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Tommy, I'm, I'm curious about the play call coming in. I mean, how much warning did you get? that that play call was going to be coming on? And did you know that, you know, you said you mentioned a couple of times this, you know, you've worked on it a few times this, the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Did you know that for certain that this was probably going to go into the game sometime today? Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we'd been practicing it in certain, certain, uh, certain parts of the field. Um, and, you know, going into that punt, I knew we were in, in that, I guess, area to, uh, mm -hmm. to run that fake and checked with uh, coach toe before, um, before we went out for the punt and um, got the call and went out there, got the look, and uh, yeah, just went for it. We'll go to Mitchell with the last one. Go ahead, Mitchell. Hey, Tommy, if you could compare what it's like to see a ball going from your hands and then seeing Patrick Mahomes, the way he's throwing the ball, how would you compare the two? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's that's a tough question. I mean, he has one of the strongest arms in the league, and I don't know. I was just thinking, just get it out there to him. So um, I'd like to check the uh, the velo on on both of both of our passes and compare them. But uh, but yeah, we'll see. 